Hello, welcome to my channel, In Flight Music. My name is Ian. So recently I started a 30-day beat challenge and something that I started doing that I wasn't doing before is using Z Game Editor. And it's basically just a video visualizer that you could use to post beats on YouTube and make them a little more interesting. So I'm just gonna show you how I use it and the settings that I'm using as a preset right now. Okay, so the really cool thing about Z Game Editor, just like any other of the other effects in FL Studio, you could save whatever you make as a preset. So now I can just load this up and I already have this template just ready, to, ready for me to export the entire beat. So all you would have to do to add effects, if I just scroll over here to the right, you'll see this plus button and it'll just add a new layer. And then you just click the drop down menu and all these are different effects that you could just add into your uh, Z game editor. So definitely go through and experiment with all of those different uh, options there because they're all pretty cool. But this first one that I wanna go over is called It's Full of Stars. You see all these little star looking things flying through the air. That's what this setting is. But here you'll see alpha, which is just the brightness of the colors the brightness of the stars. Hue is the actual color of the star. And then saturation is how bright those color, how uh, intense those colors are. So if we go to the full saturation, you can see a lot more changes here. So one cool thing that I like to do with uh, It's Full of Stars is just add a little bit of the movement to the right or left. And it just makes it look like the stars are kind of just moving around a little bit more. If you go a little too far to the right, it'll always look like they're moving to the right. So I like to kind of have, have it right in the middle, but just shift it a little left or right. But you can see that all this stuff is all pretty easy to, to mess with. Next thing that I have here is Stripe Peaks. So let me go ahead and play the beat and you'll see what this actually does. So these are the Stripe Peaks that are coming out of the emblem here. So you'll see the section that says slice. So each of these slices are different colors in those stripes. So if we go to slice two, I could change. Let me just go to a random slice and then just change the colors here. So yeah, all pretty easy to mess around with. Next thing that I have is my actual image. So the way that I threw my icon in there, I went to add content and then I just loaded up the image that I have from the browser. And then all you do is just select image under the image section and or in the image effects section and just click on image. And then you'll be able to choose your image source, which is right there in the content. And then you could adjust the size of the image here. Again, you could save all this as a preset, so that's why I'm not really worried about moving any of this around. But when I was playing the beat, you might have noticed that these were bouncing. This icon was bouncing to the beat. Well, that's Audio Shake, which is under, Audio Shake is under Post Process, and it's the second option there. In order to get this to shake, it's responding to the kick drum. And basically, if you right click and select link to controller and click the drop down menu, you'll have all of your different controller options there if you've loaded up a controller. So, what I use is peak controller on my kick drum. So, load up peak controller on the kick kick drum and I actually saved this as a preset too. So it's called kick shake. And basically I just have the bass turned down all the way, all the way down. So that keeps the size where it originally was. And if I were to increase this, let's take a look. 
So this keeps it in its original spot. Volume is the amount of shake. Tension is how fast it's gonna shake and come back. And then, well, tension is how fast it ramps up into the decay, which is how fast it goes back and forth. So if I have the decay really slow, it's gonna bounce really slow. So you'd see the difference in speed there. You might also be noticing that the stars brighten up when the snare hits. So I have a peak controller on the snare. So I have the snare peak controller linked to alpha. And you'll notice it ducks down to brighten it up. And that's because the volume is going to the left instead of going to the right. If I move this to the right, it'll increase the alpha, which will darken the stars instead. Basically, the main two things that you need to know is just adding your content here, which is whatever image that you want, your icon, anything like that, and then uh, using Peak Controller to control these items. And all you do is just load up a Peak Controller on any of the sounds that you want it to react to. If you wanted to, you could put a peak controller on the overall mix and this any of these controls will respond to the overall overall mix. So let me know if you plan on trying out Z Game Editor. It's a lot easier than what I thought it was going to be. So definitely give it a shot. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave me a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.